Warning, this video is intended for those who are new to the game, coming back to the game, and or has an open ear for tips and tricks. This video is not intended for those who are pro players and those who play this game for 6 to 12 hours a day. With that being said, the following video will totally kick butt. If you enjoyed this video and or have a large ding dong, please click the like button below. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Alright, it's 2020 and this game has been out for 3 years now, or a little over 3 years. Why are you guys still watching tips and tricks videos on PUBG? <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Like what I said in the disclaimer from the beginning of the video, this isn't meant for those pro players, so I don't want to hear any, I've known all these for 2 years now, type of comments. Sometimes it's good to have a reminder on some tips you probably knew, but forgot about. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new around here, and hit that notification bell. I would like to set a goal of 15 likes, maybe 15 to 20 likes, that would be greatly appreciated. But without further ado, let's do this. So tip number one, using the waypoint feature effectively. I only recently started using the waypoint feature when rank came into play this season, but now I realize that you can use the waypoint feature to help improve your gameplay for solos, duos, and for squads. Here are some examples on why the waypoint feature is effective. So during the flight path, mark exactly where the plane is flying through. This will help indicate key places other players might drop, using the waypoint to help dictate what route to go next. This especially works well for duos and squads. Sometimes being in a car will make it harder for your team to communicate, especially someone who doesn't have a mix amp or a way to tone down the game volume. Using the waypoint to help the driver know exactly what route to drive in is less of a stress than two people yelling at each other's ears trying to hear the other person. And finally, the waypoint is great to mark where care packages are landing. Look directly at the care package, estimate how far the package is, go to your big map and just waypoint a straight line to into where you're looking. Find a vehicle and boom, drive straight to where you put that waypoint line and you're almost guaranteed to find the package around your waypoint line. Now tip number two is since we're already on the topic of waypoints and stuff, this tip is specifically for rank mode only. Now I totally didn't forget to say this during my rank tips and tricks, but nonetheless the more you know right? <laughs> anyway, for tip number nine, the first circle will always touch the flight path. This will help you indicate where people are dropping to ensure you'll be safe away from any harms and dangers. Or if you like the feeling of being frisky and risky, by all means land to the hottest place next to the flight path and test your luck and skills in ranked. Now coming in at number 3 spot we have the use the auto reload feature. Now this one is totally personal preference and I know the veteran players or the OG players who has been playing PUBG ever since the beginning don't use this feature. But to me personally, I feel like it reloads your gun in a more efficient way. If you don't use the auto reload feature, let me explain what it does. When you have, a z when you have zero bullets in your clip and you shoot your, your gun, your character will automatically reload your gun for you instead of the clicky noise happening indicating that you ran out of bullets. Now here's my explanation on why I feel the auto reload feature is a must. At the start of the game, it is very crucial to find a gun with a box of ammo as soon as possible. But that is only half the battle. You still need to reload your gun and shoot the enemies who are near you. Now if you don't have the auto reload feature enabled, you have to let go of your right analog stick to click the X button if you're on Xbox or the square button on the PS4, thus leaving you vulnerable for a split second of looking around if need be. Whereas if you have the auto reload enabled once you pick up your gun and a box of ammo, um, you can quickly just tap the right trigger to reload your gun while you still have your thumb on the right analog stick to continue looking around. Now this might be a very minuscule difference, but I've had it to where when I landed with another player I was able to reload my gun while continuing to look at the player in a swift manner causing me to have a quicker advantage on that person. Another reason why having the auto reload feature enabled is a must is when you're having a hectic battle. Either be solos, duos, or squads, you sometimes don't look at the amount of ammo you have in your clip if you're on a hectic battle. If your gun clip is close to empty while in a really hectic battle, with auto reload on, once your clip reaches zero, it'll automatically reload your gun for you, whereas if you don't have auto reload on, you'll have that second of delay realizing that you need to reload your gun. 
I've seen so many top tier players not notice their clip is almost empty or even is empty and they forget to reload their gun. They would scope up to somebody's head to take them out and bam, all you hear is a clicking noise of an empty gun, thus ruining the one opportunity to easily take out an enemy. But again, like I said, it's your own choice if you want to enable auto reload or not. Now tip number 4 is wiggling your ears. And no I don't mean physically wiggle your ears in real life while playing the game, I meant to move your player's head left and right in a quick manner to easily pinpoint where you hear your shots. Now doing this on FPP is better than doing it in TPP. Now I don't know why I feel like in FPP is better to pinpoint shots, I have no scientific reasoning behind it but I've been wiggling my ears when I'm out in the open to pinpoint exactly where I'm getting shot at. Even now when I play TPP I get shot from a different, if I get shot from distance I quickly go to FPP to wiggle my ears to see where I'm getting shot from. Give it a try ladies and gentlemen and I call it wiggling of the ears because I have no idea what else to call it. Now tip number 5 is make it a habit to watch the kill feed. Now this goes hand in hand with my previous video of information is key, but I feel like I didn't thoroughly explain why watching the kill feed for information is a skill worth having. Watching the skill feed doesn't uh, does many things, it helps show what guns are in play, if there are enemies nearby you or where you are and who in the lobby is owning. It also shows how many knocks there are if two or more teams are fighting. Which helps, you which helps your decisions on either running away or third partying those sums of biscuits. Of course, watching the kill feed and effectively making it a habit takes a lot of time. I would say this kind of skill in PUBG isn't one that someone could get, away get right away, but more of how many hours you play into the game. As a person who really isn't good at explaining things a lot, I just want to give you an example from real life playing that I've encountered recently when I played ranked. So I was with my set squad and we noticed that this one particular person was owning everybody in the lobby with a Groza. Since it's ranked we like to play a little bit more passive due to the how the RP system works. So we were just noticing this one guy squad wiping everybody with a Groza. I bet you he probably had 10 kills easily before the final circle. Because we noticed he had the Groza and we were familiar with how the Groza sounds, we stayed away from that particular team until the very end. Finally at the final circles we heard this one guy take out one last squad before we would inevitably fight my squad next for the chicken dinner. The moment we heard guns fight we all rushed to his location to bombard him with everything we got for the chicken dinner. That's just one of those scenarios that helped us when we were w watching the kill feed. Again this type of skill takes time and effort, very rarely you'll see a new player get the hang of it right away. Now tip for, for tip number 6 we have the 6x scope is the best scope to spray with. Now a lot of people ask me, But Brad, how do you spray with the 6x scope so well? Well to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen, there's barely any recoil to begin with if you pull back the scope. The scope. Of course it's essentially a 3x pulled back, but it's a 3x with a cleaner looking sight. There's really not much to explain about it, just give it a try and you'll see how ridiculously easy it is to spray from farther distances. I even tried it on P -P 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 PC PUBG the other day with a controller and it was still easier to spray with the 6x scope zoomed all the way out than the regular 3x scope. In my opinion, the 6x with a 5x6 weapon is a very basic thing to do to help you control sprays with all other scopes higher than the 2x. Now coming in at number 7 spot we have lowering your vertical, dis your vertical sensitivity. Now this goes more towards console PUBG and just like, the other, like, just like the auto reload feature, it's really up to you of what makes you feel more comfortable. Now I'm not going into much detail on why this helps your recoil control or else this video is going to be 20 plus minutes long. I'll just put a card in the top right right now showing an in-depth video on how to control and compensate for recoil on PUBG. Pretty much having a lower vertical sensitivity allows you to pull down the right stick and lock a little bit slower so your shots does not bounce all over this place. Now coming in at number 8 spot we have prone without a backpack tactic. Yep, I said it. Now this is a super 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 sweaty tactic from back in the good old days. The OG PUBG players will remember this but during the final circle, if the circle lands out in the open field there's, there's tall, and there's tall grasses around, a tactic you can use to better hide is to take off your backpack. It is visibly better to have no backpack than a backpack while being prone around a bush of tall grasses. I know, I know this is a frowned upon 
But if you really want the win or need the win, then this tactic is for you. Don't worry about your 400 plus rounds of 9mm ammo you have stored away in your backpack. During the final circle, you just need the essentials. At least one first aid, some energy drinks, enough ammo to reload your gun once or twice, and a couple of throwables. And at the end of the day, all the loot you've collected that leads you towards being at the final circle is useless anyway once the game ends. Now coming in at number 9 spot, we have Go FPP around smoke. I've always praised how important smoke is in PUBG and I still stand by the smoke. I still stand stand by that smoke is the most important throwable to carry. But if an enemy uses it, sometimes it's harder to know exactly where you can find them. The best way to track them down, especially in a close quarters combat, is to go to FPP. You'll be able to see much more inside the smoke than if you are and then if you're on TPP. And now finally, for tip number 10, spying SSD. But for real, it does help, but that really isn't the final tip. The final tip is watch other streamers and YouTubers. Now I said this in my very first tip and tricks video, and it's still the same thing for today. I'll put myself in this example, okay? You know back in the day I used to watch a lot of Spiros, Militia, Zastro, T-Hugs, and a lot of other PUBG content creators play, and I will pick up bits and pieces of how they play and implement that into my playstyle. And it's still the same thing right here on the year 2020. You know, I currently watch Lino Blitz 5 and Friends, Big Red Cliffy, One Tough Midget, Mr. Haglitch, Plow13, and many, many others in our PUBG community. And I gotta say, even though I played this game for three years, there are things that I learned by just watching them play and by playing with them as well. I am by no means a top tier player. Out of everybody that I listed, statistically, my stats are the worst in all of theirs. But that doesn't stop me from always getting better at this game. And it shouldn't stop you guys either. No matter what skill level you are at this moment in PUBG, you always have room to improve. If you like more of a strategic way to play, hey, watch Blitz 5. If you like the more high octane adrenaline, all hands on deck type of playstyle, watch Cliffy. If you want to incorporate both of those styles, watch both. I will leave a link down in the description to all those budget content creators I watch at this time. And if I miss your name, I apologize sincerely. I truly do. But I'm gonna try to get everybody that I watch. Well, I made it I made this video longer than I should have, and I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted to be more thorough in these type of videos. I'll tell you what though, I'm gonna make a timestamp pinned down in the comment section below. All I ask you is to share this video with your friends. Please help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers. That would be greatly appreciated and it would mean the world to me. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, before anything else, stay beautiful. I hope you guys learned something and I'll catch you guys next time. Slug Nation out. Peace out, guys. Love you all. Mwah. Goodbye for now.